morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Living Hope Lutheran Church. Glad that you're here to worship with us. Pray that the Lord would bless your worship this morning. Um, we continue to kind of work through our new uh, order of worship here. Again, let me know how it goes. Give me your thoughts on it. Let me know what you think about it. And we're also still talking about our sermon series, Into the Harvest Field. God sends us out into the world. We're going to talk about the idea, I'll never be able to do that. Or I can't do that. And Jesus, in his word, gives us some things to think about when we start to think that way. Um, those of you who are online, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Service, uh, how does that work? Now, with our new live stream, there's a form online. On the live stream, right. <laughs> Please post your prayer requests. We'll get to those in a little while. Um, let's join together in our opening hymn, Jesus Saves. Let's stand and join together in song, <coughs> blessings on worship today. of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bow our heads and we pray for worship. Eternal God, we have gathered today to rejoice in you, to rejoice in the creation of the world and in the gift of the breath of life, in the daily bread you provide and in the protection you give, in the redemption you have won for us through Jesus, and in the faith your Spirit has created in us, in the promise of strength for each day, and in the promise of eternal life in Lord Jesus, you promised where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. We thank you for our congregation. We join together with our brothers and sisters to encourage one another to find peace in you. We pray for your blessing on our worship today. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find help, 
which our soul find comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the aged find consolation and the young be inspired. Lord Jesus, it is you who have blessed us with those who serve us today. Without your help, your service would be in vain, for they are sinners like us. Do not forsake them, but bless those who serve and worship today. Give them your own spirit to guide them. May their service be acceptable to you and a blessing to us. Inspire their work on our behalf this morning, that we all might be drawn to you. O Holy Spirit, you poured out your power on your people as wind and fire. We pray that today you would come again. Uh, you once again pour out your power on your people here. Come as a fire to cleanse us within, and as a wind to inspire us. Come as a light to lead us in the darkness, and as a truth to dispel our ignorance. Come as power to enable us in our weakness. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are all set free from the service of ourselves to be your servants in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord who loved us enough to die for us. Join us. <laughs> Today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to talk a little bit today about our abilities, our gifts from God to do the work that He has given us to do. Every single one of us is a part of the body of Christ. Paul here makes a reference. He compares us to an actual human body where there's a hand and there's an ear and there's a nose, and each one of us plays a part in that. And together we work for the sake of the kingdom. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. This is what is written. Just as a body, uh, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot said, should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. They are all one part, where would the body be? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll talk a little bit more about that section of scripture later. Next lesson comes from uh, Isaiah. Sometimes there is this idea that in the Old Testament, God didn't care about all people. All he cared about was Israel. It's not true. It's not true. God has always wanted everyone to be saved. 
and Isaiah here talks about that. Chapter 45. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that cannot, that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by me every tongue will swear. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are deliverance and strength. All who have raged against him will come to him and be put to shame. And all the descendants of Israel will find deliverance in the Lord and make their boast in him. This is the word of the Lord. Join it together in a song praising God for who he is. It's good for us to remember who it is that we serve and what he's like. I invite you to stand as we go through this. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones has lifted up the humble, he has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? With your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. With your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The Lord reigns forever and ever.
bow our heads and we say a prayer. <coughs> Lord God, Heavenly Father, give you thanks for today and for all the blessings that you pour out on us. Give you thanks for calling us into your kingdom and then for using us, inviting us in, Lord God, to participate in the work of sharing the message of salvation, of sins forgiven, and of home in heaven. Lord, bless us as we meditate on your word today. In Jesus' name. My brothers, my sisters, I remember as a boy watching my dad uh, fix cars. He, he has this way, all he has to do is stand and listen to an engine running and he can tell you what's wrong with it. If it drives by on the road, he can tell you what part needs to be replaced and what's wrong with it. I remember him going into a car that he had never been in, just taking it apart and figuring out exactly what was wrong and how to fix it. And I said to myself, I'm never going to be able to do what my dad does. It just seemed impossible. I wonder sometimes if we think that way about sharing the faith that we have. Where it just feels like actually doing the, the difficult job of sharing the news of Jesus Christ with someone who may or may not like what we have to say is just something that I'm not sure that I have the, the gifts for, the ability to do. That's good for you, Pastor. That's your job. You've been trained in it. You've done it before. It's what you get to do. And yes, I do it. And I do it a lot. And I think I'm okay at it. I don't always know. But I do remember one time a member of the congregation, longtime Christian, watching me talk to someone who had just walked through the door, and he came up to me and he would never guess that this man would say this. He said, Pastor, I don't think I could ever do what you do. And he was wrong. When we ever start to think that some of these things like that are beyond us, I think we need to listen a little bit to what Jesus says and does in our text today. It is true that sometimes there are challenges when it comes to witnessing the faith that make it very difficult, and we shouldn't think or dismiss that and think lightly of it. But we should also understand what God has promised to do. Our text today, we're going to we're almost done with this sermon series. Not quite, but almost done. It comes from Matthew chapter 9 and into chapter 10. Part of it is printed for you in the program. I'm going to read one verse beyond that. I decided to add that in today. This is what is written. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. I asked the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers into the harvest field. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. I want to start with that last idea and work our way back. Don't go to the Samaritans. That doesn't seem right, does it? Don't go to the Gentiles or the towns of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. I just said earlier, and we read from Isaiah, that he wanted all the ends of the earth to come to him. So why does he tell the disciples not to go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but to go to Israel? When my first car died, I had to go buy a second car because I was like a junior in college. And I went out looking for a car 
and I didn't make the wisest choice in purchasing my car. I, I bought one that was cool, which is not usually a good idea, right? Uh, especially when you're on a limited budget. I bought this 1983 Mercury Grand Marquis, but this thing was, this was done up nice, right? Oh, all the windows were tinted, it had been lowered down, it had these big old rims on it, your flashy rims, right? Had lights that ran along the running board so the road lit up when I was driving it. A big old sound system on the back so I could thump through the neighborhood. I was in heaven, I was the coolest dude, right? It was a lemon. It immediately started to give me, immediately started to give me problems. I'd had a car for a while, so I knew the basic stuff. I knew how to change the oil, and even the brakes, I think by that point, I knew how to do that. This was the transmission. And I knew nothing about how to fix a transmission. And so I had to take it to someone that had to do it. Learning how to fix a car, you don't start with the transmission. A couple of you who do some car repairs in here, am I right? Yeah, that's a hard one, transmission. I think that's what Jesus is saying to the disciples. He's saying you're not quite ready to change the transmission or to overhaul an engine. So don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the Samaritan do it. Start with the people of Israel that you know and understand. There's some wisdom in that, right? When we talk about sharing the faith that we have, maybe the people that we start with are not the diehard skeptics. Maybe not someone who grew up practicing Hinduism. Not that God doesn't want them to come to faith, but it's that it's difficult for us because we don't necessarily know how to do it. Start where? With people that you know and understand. Your own family. Your own friends people who are like you and that you understand where they're coming from, share with them first. Right? Start there. And once you get some practice in that, and once you get, do that for a while, then maybe you can move on to dropping the transmission and putting a new one in. Maybe then you can go and talk to the hardcore skeptic. And, and I think there's some value in that too, is understanding that just because I'm not able to do it right now doesn't mean that I'll never be able to do it. Because what should I be trying to do? Learn. Figure it out. Think through the, the challenges that someone might have. Think through the way that we might talk to someone. I, I still can't do a transmission, but I can do a whole lot more now than I used to be able to do. Why? Because I tried. I did it. I grew in my understanding. It's true of witnessing our faith, too. There's books to train, there's people to talk to, there's experiences you can have. We oughtn't ever sit there and say, well, I can't do it and I never will be able to, because God has told us that we should always be prepared. Give a reason for the hope that we have. One, first sermon in the series, compassion for those who don't know Jesus Christ. The same love that God has for me have for those who don't know him. So let me learn. Let me grow. Let me develop. He also, you know, you look at who he sent out there, right? When God sends us out to do his work and be in his kingdom. He doesn't ask us to be something that we're not or to somehow do something that we're incapable of doing. It is true, like we read in Corinthians, that every single one of us has been blessed by God with gifts. We're all part of the body, and we all work together for the sake of the kingdom. Some people are like this, and some people are like that, and some people are this, and they're good at that, and they're not so good at this. And every single one of us has been blessed by God in different ways. And what God would have us do is go out into the world with the gifts that we have, and who he has made us to be, and be his witnesses in this unique way that God has made you. I don't need to be, well, my example of this is Thomas Spiegelberg. So maybe some of you know uh, Tim Spiegelberg up in uh, Firestone. His older brother and I were friends. Tommy Spiegelberg can talk to anyone about anything for any length of time. He has the amazing ability 
you talk. The joke is always made that he could have a conversation with a phone book. <laughs> he has, the, I don't need to be him. Because God didn't make me him. But it doesn't mean that God has not blessed me with gifts to talk about his kingdom and to be useful in his kingdom. I need to be me, who God made me to be. You see that with the disciples there, right? Were all 12 of those disciples the same people? Yeah, but you have Peter, right? Peter was what? Yeah, he's a fisherman. So he's a uh, working man, right? Worked with his hands. He was also uh, uh, impulsive, right? Something happened, he pulls out his sword, chops the ear off someone. And Jesus was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Peter jumps out of the boat, he walks on the water. Amazing, right? Breaks out because he sees the wind. Peter was passionate, but he was highly uneducated. You read his epistles in the Greek. Uh, we don't see it because they've niced it up for us. But he was terrible with grammar. He did. An English teacher would, would freak out. Well, not an English teacher. A Greek teacher <laughs> would freak out looking at his letter because his grammar was bad. He was uneducated. And yet he would, God used him to lead the church and to bring how many people to faith? And then you have John. John was not loud. He was not in your face. He was not uh, uh, like Peter at all. John was quiet, was reserved. He was, he, was, he, was, he was always talked about uh, the love of John. He was a very soft wants to talk in a bad way. But you understand what I'm trying to say? I have a word you can't remember. God used him to lead the church. You got Thomas. Thomas was, I need proof. Unless I put my hand in his side and my fingers in the holes in his hands, I'm not going to believe. I need proof. I'm someone who is logical. I'm someone who needs evidence. Otherwise, God used Thomas. You got Simon the Zealot. You know what it means that he was a zealot? He was a hardcore political activist on one side of the political debate. So he was tempered by the political debate of the day. And God used him. Matthew, the tax collector, businessman, good with his money, made lots of money, probably a wealthy man. God used him. <laughs> Point is, when God made you, he made you exactly the way he wanted you to be. He didn't mess up in the way he he gave you the gifts that you need to carry out the work that he's given you to do. And just because you're not like so-and-so doesn't mean that God can't use you to talk about his kingdom. Who are you? Who has God made you to be? That's the evangelist you should become. You following me? On top of that, God promises that when we are in a position, we may need something promises to always give us what we need to carry out that work. At the end of, end of the section, he says to the disciples, you're going to be arrested, you're going to be dragged before the synagogue, the Sanhedrin, and before rulers, and he says, when you get there, don't worry, because the Spirit will give you the words that you need. It doesn't mean I need to go find the difficult, dangerous situations to share my faith in, but if God should put me in a situation where I am to share my faith, even if, if it feels like it's beyond me, I should not doubt that God will give me the tools that I need to do the work that he lays in front of me. Because if he puts it in front of you, he will bless you. When we say that I'll never be able to do it, or I can't do it, what are we saying about our God? What are we saying about the promises that he makes to us? And the gifts that he gives? The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that Jesus didn't stop teaching. He went out on this missionary journey, went out and they shared the gospel, and they came back, and Jesus said, good, you're done. He kept teaching them for two more years after this. Grow train ourselves to talk about these things. There are courses that we can take, and maybe I should run one of them. 
I will tell you the one thing I don't like about those courts is that they treat every every witness person the same and every person that we are witnessing to the same. You understand what I mean? Cookie cutter. We learn from it. But the problem is that each one of us is different, but learning, understanding ways to talk about Jesus Christ, learning, growing in what the Bible really says so that when the opportunity comes for me to tell someone about Jesus and the forgiveness of sins, I'm not sitting here going, uh, God never told us that we should be able to fix our car. He didn't encourage us to go out and do some prayers and talk about him. God would have us participate in his kingdom to talk to people about the forgiveness of sins, about the cross of Jesus Christ, about the hope of eternal life. Pray that you never think that you can't, or that you never feel that God is going to abandon you. That in confidence you openly declare and proclaim the forgiveness of sins in Jesus. He's sending you out into the largest field. There's a lot of people out there. Amen. Let's stand and join together in song. We sing by faith.
have been requested for Tate Spiegelberg. Um, they don't know what to do next. Um, so we will pray for wisdom and guidance for the documents. We also pray for our sister Tammy. Uh, pray for healing. She was bit by a dog this last week, Thanksgiving, that it wasn't worse because it could have been pretty bad. Uh, we'll pray for her for healing. We also give thanks to God for years of life for Danielle and Melody, who are both celebrating their birthdays this week. Is there any other prayer requests today? Yes, of course. Um, my cousin's daughter, Susanna, she is kind of the same thing as Tate. The doctors don't know what to do, and so she's in hospital right now. Tate is on? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Susanna Susanna Son. Susanna. Yeah. Susanna mm -hmm. Son. Susanna Son. Okay. Yes, sir. Our daughter Ashley is getting married today. Oh. Some blessings on that, right? Yes, Sharon. Our client has been with us. How we found a place for my brother's home in assisted living. He has been on a waiting list for the review January and February. Thank you for having me call. We will pray for blessings on that, right? Yeah. Christine? Um, this continues to be healing for Carly's profession. And then uh, <laughs> dad, and then <laughs> for me, it's also this week. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll pray for Dan. Yes. We had a friend who passed away in Kansas this last week, and prayed for the family, and we're going back for the funeral, so pray, pray for our St. Travis. What's, um, what's his name? Greg. Greg Babcock. Greg. Greg. <laughs> yes, Judy. I have two requests. Our two daughters, Tara and Michelle, and our son-in-law, all have contracted COVID. Oh. What's what's your son in law's name again? Judy. <clears throat> a prayer of thanksgiving. I had a second infusion on Friday, and none of the horrible effects that I had after the first one. So I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> so blessings for feeling well. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, Kristen. Yes, Carmen. Yes, Carol. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, Addison. Your mom was. What's your mom's name? What is it? Megan. 
break the negative. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, Eva. Yes, Dakota. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, I missed you. Sorry. Um, I have a friend that's missing. Can we um, pray for her safety and when we'll find her at home? What, what's her name? Lacey. Lacey. Go ahead and pray. Any online? Nathan Whitney also had a concussion, so we'll pray for him and Brittany. All right, we're going to stand, join together in the prayer song that's printed in the program, and we'll join together in prayer. you would take control, that you would govern all things, that you would heal, that you would bless, that you would comfort, that you would calm. We start, Lord God, by praying and giving thanks for all those who are celebrating birthdays this week. May that you would bless them with many more years. May that you would fill their lives with joy and happiness and faith and strength, Lord God. Danielle and Roman, Melody, Dan and Chloe, thank you, Lord God, for watching over them and pray that you would bless this morning. Pray for wisdom, Lord God. Wisdom on the doctors who are caring for Susanna and Tate. Pray, Lord God, that you would watch over both of those little girls, that you would guide the doctors who care for them, show them the way that they should go, open their eyes to see and heal these two little girls, Lord God. Commit them to your care and ask for your blessing on them, strength for their families, and healing on those two boys. We give you thanks, Lord God, for watching over, for blessing and protecting. Uh, for making things work out better. We pray for Tammy and thank you that her dog bite wasn't worse. Pray, Lord God, that you would heal her, continue to heal her, Lord God. Thank you that Miss Judy's second infusion wasn't uh, like the first. Pray, Lord God, that you bless the medication that she is taking, Lord, and that you would uh, restore her health. Pray for those who are um, going through big changes in their lives. We know, Lord God, that you are always with us. Pray that you would especially remind those who are going through changes in their life of your presence, of your love, of your blessing. Teach them, Lord God, to, to rely on you and on your promises. We think especially of Ashley. She gets married today. Pray that you would bless her new life with her husband. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with those two and bind them together. Teach them to love as you love and be united as you are united. Pray for Ken as he adjusts to life in assisted living. Pray, Lord, that he would that you uh, that you would bless him there. Uh, that's 
difficult adjustment in life. Pray that you would help them to adjust to your new life. We pray for those who are mourning the death of a loved one. We think of Greg and his family. And we also think of, uh, uh, of Janice. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with both Greg and Janice's family and that you would teach them, help them to find comfort in your promises and your presence and your power and your love. Uh, be with those families and comfort them in difficult days. Pray for those who are struggling with health issues. And we pray, Lord God, for healing and for blessing, for comfort and for faith in difficulty. We think of our sister Carly. Pray that you would take away her concussions. We think of Tara and Michelle and Dave that you would heal them of COVID. That you would be with our sister Maria, who is not feeling well. Pray, Lord God, that you would heal her. We think of Britain, who also has a concussion. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with Britain and heal him, Lord. Um, we uh, also Mary Catherine. Pray for Mary Catherine. Uh, pray for, what am I praying for Mary Catherine? I can't read my own Right here. Oh, she died. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with the family of Mary Catherine. <clears throat> be with that family, Lord God. Watch over them and help them to find comfort in your promises. Pray for Megan, who's battling breast cancer, and pray, Lord God, that you would heal her, uh, guide the doctors, and bless the treatments that she has. Pray for Elry, who goes in for his CAT scan. Pray, Lord God, that you would guide the doctors to find out what's wrong, Lord God, and pray that everything would be all right. Pray that you would be with the Ewings as they travel to a funeral, Lord God. Watch over them as they go and as they come and bless their trip. Pray, Lord God, for Nathan, who also suffered a concussion. Pray, Lord God, that you would heal him and that you would bless him. Finally, Lord God, we pray that you would guide Lucy back to her family, to her friends, Lord, that you love. Pray that they would find she's missing Lord. Pray that whatever is going on, that you would take control and that you would bring her back. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and gave him thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take me, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
invite forward now those who have prepared themselves to receive Christ's body and blood during the distribution. We will join in the two hymns that are printed. We'll get started with the musicians in the back. Take and eat. This is the body of the Lord. It's death. Drink. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it. Peace of the Lord be with you all. <coughs>
This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Eat and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord Jesus, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. This truly, this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus, drink and eat. Keep you in the true faith, for the life everlasting. For our dead, peace will come.
Please stand. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with joy. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord look on you with his favor. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Living Hope. Glad that you're here today. Before we sing our last song, take a moment to greet the people around you. Shake each other's hands a little bit. Good morning. things to take note of there. One thing, looking for some help. Rocky Mount Lutheran High School is having their uh, annual Oktoberfest in October. Um, and uh, we always have a booth or two just to help out. If you are willing to help out with that day, please speak with, can they speak with you? With Miss Christine. Uh, just looking for some people to help out with that. I'm not really sure exactly what we're doing as yet. So I think we're making caramel apples. So um, if you can help make the caramel apples and crock pots, or if you can help, you know, cut the apple and pour some caramel on them, we just need some help in the booth. Um, and then we also potentially might be doing, Mike is not here, a water balloon launcher. Um, so if you might need some help with that as well. If you're interested in either, please stick around afterwards and let me know that you're interested in helping, please. So a launch is a water balloon, like 100 yards, and you have to hit the target. So if you want to help out with that, Mike's got it all set. All right. um, so next Sunday, uh, we will have uh, Mrs. Knox. So the wife of one of the teachers here at the high school <laughs> is a pharmacist, and she will be coming to give flu shots. And there's other things later. I should read it. Flu shots, high-dose flu shots, which if I remember right, are for 65 and older, right? Yeah. And then RSV shots. Okay, if you would like to take advantage of that, there's a QR code that you can use to do that. She will be here from 10 until 11.30 next, next uh, Sunday morning, just to, just to help us out a little bit, okay? Any questions on that? Any more information? 
that you need that I didn't talk about? Bring your insurance card. Bring your insurance card. Okay. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, you can take a look at the other things coming up. Live stream is now full time on our website. Walk of Hope coming up for our sister Deb. Uh, love to have you participate in that as well. Let's we'll take a look at the schedule for the week. Uh, one thing on their leadership team on Thursday. Is there anything that I missed? Okay. Let's uh, let's stand and end our service. Bottle class Sunday school to follow. Love to have you join us. Um, I will say a prayer and then we'll join together in song. Please stand. <coughs> Lord God, may your strength protect us, may your power preserve us, may your wisdom, O Lord, instruct us, may your hand pilot us, may your ways direct us, may your shield, O God, defend us, may your host guard us against the snares of the evil one and the temptations of the world. Christ be with us, Christ be behind us, before us, beside us, and within us. Be with us, O Christ, in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ at work and at home, Christ beyond my mouth and in my heart and all through my life. Dwell in us, Christ, to win us, to comfort us, to restore us, and to save us. May your salvation, O Lord, be always ours this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.